OK, so <laughs> hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Vladimir Agafonkin, but you can call me Vlad. Uh, I'm a principal architect at uh, Universal Mind. And uh, in the Phosphor G community, I'm mostly known for singing a ridiculous song <laughs> in the first keynote. Uh, but I also did one small little thing for the Geo community. I created Leaflet. So um, if you don't know what Leaflet is, please raise your hands. OK, so not many people. But uh, Leaflet is actually is a very simple thing. Uh, it was initially created uh, about two and a half years ago. Uh, as a very simple, very lightweight, small uh, open layers alternative, uh, a very simple JavaScript library for interactive maps. And uh, it's, it looks very simple. It's uh, just uh, some tiles, uh, some vector data, some markers and pop-ups, uh, and some interaction. So you can zoom, pan around. It's, uh, it's everything you, uh, you're accustomed to, so nothing very new. So, um, uh, and uh, the history of it is also very short. So, uh, in 2005, Google Maps API started it all in the online maps world. In 2006, OpenWares was built, was built already, very uh, long time ago. And in 2009, Google Maps API version 3 was released with really great support for mobile uh, and etc. And only in May 2011, Leaflet was released in public. And uh, in a very, very short time, this really simple uh, uh, piece of software, it's gained such a hugely uh, popular presence on the web. So I, I was striked. So uh, in a very short amount of time, something so simple uh, got used by uh, the biggest players uh, in the online world. So Flickr, Foursquare, uh, GitHub, uh, OpenStreetMap <coughs> switched to it on the front page. Uh, uh, all the new, uh, major newspapers like New York Times, Washington Post, The Guardian, all the most innovative uh, geo companies like Mapbox <coughs> and Car2DB use it, and uh, a lot of government agencies. And so even Wik Wikipedia uses it. So. Um, I could, uh, at this talk, I could just uh, go through Leaflet features, show you some demos, um, but uh, I think it's kind of boring. Uh, so uh, instead, I think I will, I want to tell you a story, a story of how Leaflet was born and, how, uh, and why it was born, and uh, uh, why I think it became so popular, what made it so. So the story. Um, I can say that uh, I can't say that, that I'm a very good developer. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I'm, I'm very lazy. Um, I get easily distracted, uh, and I'm certainly uh, not the smartest uh, person in this room. There are people much smarter than me, uh, and in fact, I'm better as a rock musician. I'm yeah, seriously, I'm a rock musician. I, I lead a band of seven people, and we play beautiful music. Uh, but uh, what makes me a very good open source developer and maybe not very good like corporate enterprise type developer is that I easily get excited about something. So <laughs> if I'm excited, I get this urge, this rush to just code and build something cool. And uh, exactly this happened in April 2008, five years ago, when uh, I found out that I was going to work for CloudMate. CloudMate was a new startup, startup that uh, based its uh, commercial products on top of uh, open source, uh, 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 OpenStreetMap. And uh, I didn't knew anything about what we were going to do. And there was about a week left until CloudMate will come to Kiev uh, to hire our uh, <laughs> development team. Uh, and I started reading about this company. I was curious. And I found out about OpenStreetMap, and I got really, really excited. And I couldn't wait until they come in a week and tell us what to do. So I started coding right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, in case someone is bored by the presentations, I, I just uh, included some pictures of kittens. Uh, so just you, you, you can just look at the pictures. Don't listen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was uh, I started to uh, code and I, I built a really really simple like 200 lines of code uh, uh, sloopy map implementation. So it, it could, couldn't do anything. It, you can just it could just load the OpenStreetMap tiles and pan around and zoom and nothing more. And uh, yeah, I, I was really excited, and I, I didn't know anything about uh, like uh, uh, existing solutions for this like open layers. And uh, when CloudMate came to Kiev, and I immediately showed them this, they said, "Wow, that's nice! You you're gonna be our JavaScript API guy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I became our their API guy, and uh, they had services. Uh, uh, built on top of uh, OpenStreetMap data, like uh, geocoding, tiles, routing, and they needed a simple JavaScript API for that, so that people could put their services to good use on their websites. So um, they uh, told me, well, that's all very cool that you built, but uh, we can't risk building something from scratch. We need to uh, build a full-featured API quickly. We need it to be major, and uh, there's then there's this very major, very established open source solution everyone uses in the GIS world. It's called Open Layers, and we will just build on top of it. Well, <laughs> I was a bit frustrated. I, I said, okay. Um, <laughs> and only then, and I started uh, like uh, looking at Open Layers and trying to understand what, what it is. And uh, before I say something about Open Layers, I need you to understand that I was very naive, uh, I, in experience. I didn't knew anything about this really huge, complex uh, world, GIS world, with like advanced uh, hundreds of formats and protocols. It was very new to me. I didn't knew anything about this. I, I was thinking that, well, maps can be complex. You just have some tiles you pan around. So it can be <laughs> much <laughs> harder than that, yeah? And when I saw open layers, I I just freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was totally smashed. I mean, I look at open layers and it's like one megabyte of JavaScript code, like 100,000 lines of code, what? And I, I don't know, I, I was uh, completely confused and uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I couldn't figure out what what's it's all about. And uh, uh, I got really desperate. <laughs> And then I, I had this uh, small thought that, uh, well, we need some basic API requirements. Uh, and they're actually not very complex. We need uh, some uh, tiles, no projections, uh, just Mercator, x, y, z. Uh, some markers, some pop-ups, some uh, polylines and polygons, and not, sh not much more than that. That's mostly all that users want from an API. And uh, I went to this uh, uh, IRC channel, awesome Dev, I think, I, I don't remember exactly, and I wrote, hey guys, uh, I was thinking of building a, a really simple, really small uh, uh, open wares alternative, and what do you think of that? And there, uh, in this uh, channel, there was a very s like <coughs> important guy, very recognized in the GIS community, very respected uh, developer, and uh, he answered to me, like, fuck you. <laughs> no one wants your alternative. Just use open layers. <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe it wasn't as harsh as that, but you <laughs> <laughs> in my memory, it, uh, I tend to exaggerate, you know. It, it was five years ago. Uh, yeah, but um, when someone tells me that I, I could, can't do something, that I, I will fail, and I strongly believe in, in what I want to do. I'm like, uh, challenge accepted. <laughs> but uh, there was still a problem. CloudMate wanted me to build their API on top of OpenWares. And I said uh, to them, OK, initially. But, and then I discovered OpenWares. Uh, so I decided to cheat. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had uh, like two weeks left until the deadline. Uh, when I needed to present our new shiny API. And so I had a set of requirements for that. And I thought, well, I'll build uh, 
uh, all, everything from scratch like I wanted. I won't tell Cloudmate. <laughs> and uh, I, then I'll show them, and then I will admit that it's not open layers, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so I started coding rigorously. Uh, and uh, in several weeks, I got a very first basic iteration of uh, what would be later known as web map slide. A anyone remembers that? Oh, right. That's awesome. So uh, <laughs> yeah, this was very simple API, very fast, very quick. It was uh, very s really sm small compared to open layers, like 50 times smaller or 100 times smaller, I don't know. And um, when in two weeks, uh, uh, Cloudmates uh, came to see what I built. They, okay, let's see how it goes. They started uh, looking how it interacts and everything. And this, what, what, what's happening? Why is it so fast? How did you make open layers so fast? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and later I thought, well, uh, I have to admit that's not open, open layers. <laughs> yeah, I, I proved my point. Uh, and uh, Cloudmate said, okay, well, let's go with, with our custom solution. You were right. We, <laughs> we give up. No open layers. Uh, yeah. So two, two years later, uh, I, I was still working on the API, but I got sidetracked to different projects across Cloudmate. <laughs> and uh, the API was mostly one-man effort, and uh, uh, it was closed source, so nobody could help me. Uh, and there were lots of other projects I, I needed to do. And uh, uh, supporting uh, a map API is quite difficult when there are browsers that are advancing with every day, getting new features uh, like uh, uh, new bugs as well and uh, new devices appearing. And uh, it, was, it, it started to become uh, difficult. And I, I didn't felt very well about this. Uh, and, uh, the, the last straw was that uh, when uh, some guy uh, that was using <laughs> uh, WebMap slides, uh, he, uh, and the source was closed and obfuscated. And he took this, this obfuscated code, he like uh, re uh, reverse engineered <laughs> it to fix a bug, and then just sent me a patch and said, just apply the patch, I fixed the bug for you. And so uh, first I thought, wow, what a nice guy. And so then I, it, it became very sad because uh, I thought that, well, if people go to a great length to help this project, to contribute to it, uh, e even reverse engineer the code, then what if this code was open source? Then there, there's really a need for people to contribute to it. I just need to convince my employer to make it open source. And that's what I did. I wrote like a huge letter with 20 items uh, with my arguments why it should be open sourced. And uh, they thought about it and they agreed. So I won. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so with this, uh, I, I uh, come up with a name for it, Leaflet. And uh, web map slides eventually became leaflets. So initially, I, I wanted to just uh, extract the core of the API without the provider-related stuff and uh, uh, yeah, release it. But eventually, I just re rewrote everything from scratch <laughs> and released it as leaflet. And here's a video I put up at two-year anniversary, half a year ago. Uh, it's a visualization of uh, uh, Git history of the project. And you can see uh, first half of year I worked on it alone, just putting everything uh, well so that everything looks great. All the code is understandable and readable. Uh, yeah, and, and here's a moment when it gets released. There's one more guy that <coughs> decided to help me. And then there are other people appearing. You see Tom McRide, Jason Davis, lots of celebrities <laughs> yeah and uh, it goes better and better with time so if we wait a bit we'll see that there's a huge crowd of people contributing to the code to, to the code and that that was amazing yeah so I think uh, uh, let's wait a bit more 
until another release and another crowd of people contributing. Okay, you see a lot of people. Uh, let's not watch it to the end because we have very limited time. Okay, so leaflet the present. Uh, now you can, uh, if you see uh, a really awesome map on some huge uh, website, it's, uh, if it's not Google Maps, it will probably be leaflet. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's used on it, it has amazing uses uh, among the most visited wor websites in the world. Uh, it's it's used not just for maps but for data visualizations. Uh, uh, it has really awesome uses. Not even for real maps. This is a map of Skyrim. Who 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 played Skyrim? Yeah, uh, this is a map of World of Warcraft. Also very nice, and this is not an, even a map. It's uh, an official site of uh, Total War strategy game series, and uh, it's a screenshot browser built with leaflets. Here are some stats on GitHub. So um, yeah, three years of development total. Uh, not much lines of code, like six thousand, uh, about seven thousand. It's my, it's like uh, fifty times less than OpenWares too. Uh, it's uh, it has uh, commits from 150 people around the world, and that's an amazing number. So many people contributed to Leaflet. Uh, it has it's one of the most popular JavaScript projects on GitHub, with almost 6,000 stars and more than 1,000 forks. It's very actively developed. It has about 2,000 closed issues, about 700 closed pull requests. People sending pull requests every time, each day. Um, <coughs> there's also uh, a huge plugin infrastructure. So on uh, official plugin list is 86 plugins. That's uh, Among them are amazing plugins. S uh, some of the best ones are do uh, very great things like marker clustering. It's the best clustering of all implementations I saw. Uh, I think you saw it many times. Uh, the vector editing plugin Leaflet Draw is also really great. And uh, now I, I want to talk a bit about how, why I think Leaflet became so popular so fast. So everything com comes down to simplicity. That's my main principle and uh, what I advocate to others and what I want to inspire with. It's, uh, so initially when I thought what features I would like to see, in my library, I uh, made a list of all the possible features uh, that could appear <coughs> there, and uh, I decided, no, that's too much. I could can't handle that. I'll and instead of focusing on number of features, I will focus on quality of features. I will take the bare essentials, the most important features, and make them work perfectly across all devices, uh, mobile platforms, everywhere so that they are working great, so, so that they have design, great design out of the box, though, so that people like it just from the very beginning. And so depend on third-party plugins for everything else. And you can see there are lots of plugins to do all kinds of things. I also focused to, uh, I was very determined to make the API as simple as possible. So every action that you can do with API is just the, the mo smallest amount of code possible. I, I, th I really thought out how, it's, how to make it really small and really simple. And uh, so that's by creating a map, adding an OpenStreetMap layer, uh, adding a marker, binding a pop-up to it, and opening the pop-up is just several lines of code that's, that are just very intuitive and simple. There's also convention over configuration principle. It, it was made popular by Ruby on Rails developers. And it means that everything should work great out of the box without any uh, configuration, without like lots of configuration objects. You just create a map and it's working great out of, out of the box. And if you do something, want to do something more, you can. But out of the box, everything works, works great. And uh, one of the most important principles uh, that made Leafwood attract so many contributions, uh, and I think this principle is lacking in many open source projects, especially in the GIS industry, is that code shouldn't be just simple outside. I mean, the API 
endpoints and so like inter UI interface. It should be simple inside. The code itself should be simple. Uh, I think many of you saw this picture. Uh, like typical Apple product, typical Google product, and your company's app product, <laughs> and, and you can compare the the, the success <laughs> of the products. So the same thing happens with code. So uh, imagine you wrote a really complex, really smart uh, piece of code. It's it's beautiful. It's genius, uh, and uh, it has all the techniques, advanced te programming techniques like meta programming. Some uh, Patterns, design patterns, very difficult. E everything very extensible, like configurable, and so you have this all very smart code. And uh, then uh, someone comes to this code. He really wants to contribute, and when he tries to do that, he sees that the code is so smart and complex that he won't contribute because he thinks that it's too complex, too smart for him. An average developer thinks that, oh, my skills are not as good to contribute, and uh, I'll certainly break something because everything is so complex there, and I don't, uh, don't understand how it all works completely, so I won't contribute. And that's a big stumbling block to open source. So we have this like open source value that people can contribute to projects. But uh, this value is often unreachable because of the complexity, because people can't contribute to a code that's too complex and too smart. So I'm determined to make the code as simple as possible, just straightforward, simple. A every average programmer can go to leaflet source and understand it. And that's a great. Uh, yeah, and uh, about open source. So GitHub made it possible for open source contributions to happen, to uh, for the workflow to be as simple as possible. So now it's as simple as just clicking on a button, edit. You click on a button, edit, <coughs> and you can edit the code, and you can push the button, save, and it will send a pull request. And you you can contribute by just clicking several buttons that that couldn't <coughs> be simpler. And now that the workflow is simplified enough, and GitHub became so successfully popular because of that, now we need to make the code simpler too. So it's not enough to be just open. It's we need to be transparent. Yeah, and there's one more principle. It's uh, the poetry of code. Uh, I'm, I write lyrics for music, uh, and. Uh, I find many similarities between writing poetry and writing code because writing poetry is writing, uh, expressing deep meaning through very simple words and phrases. And it's very similar in code. If you can express something in simple wording, understandable, but that it would have deep meaning, it's, it's, it, would, it, it is great code. Yeah, and uh, as a consequence of this simplicity, the code is very easy to optimize uh, and so uh, Leafwood is very fast. It's very smooth on all platforms. And I, I also made sure that uh, this simplicity is reflected in the do documentation uh, so that it's really easy to understand. So a couple of words about the future, finally. Uh, so here's the most important moment of the presentation. Now I'm going to present you the really awesome, amazing features that Leafwood will have in the next version. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually determined to remove features uh, in Leafwood more than I want to add them. So I'm, I really try hard to make it uh, stay focused, lightweight, to, to stay it, uh, down to the bare essentials and everything worked out perfectly for, for these essential <laughs> features. And actually, this is not a joke, uh, in the last release I re removed a vector editing feature. Uh, not actually removed, I moved it from the core to the Leafwood Draw <laughs> plugin that does all the vector editing and drawing, and it belongs there much better, and Le Leafwood core stays small and compact. And everything comes down to simplicity again. So, Leafwood plans for feature making things simpler, uh, make refactoring for flexibility, uh, improving performance so that it works great on all devices, all the new devices too, improving usability, 
so that it's smooth everywhere, and improving plugin infra infrastructure that it's easier for people to write plugins, great plugins, quality plugins, and uh, better website, more tutorials. So you can do very advanced, great things with Leaflet, but not everyone knows uh, how, so tutorials are needed. And to recap the fi final slide, uh, to be really successful at open source, you need to get excited, build cool stuff, you need to believe in yourself, you need to pursue your dreams, you need to push open source, and you need to listen to my band. <laughs> so, so let me get this right. He's a developer, he's a rock musician. Uh, yeah. He puts cats on his presentations and he's now a stand-up comic. Um, <laughs> Genius. Um, so we've probably just got literally a couple of minutes, maybe one or two questions, perhaps while some of the speaker is setting up. Um, if anybody has any questions at all. Yeah, I can answer most of the questions uh, outside sure. because we don't have much time, but several maybe, yeah. Uh, how do you, do you uh, think about managing dependency uh, be, between plugin uh, and leaflet coefficient? Do you plan to do something like with Grunt where you have dependency tree? Um, I don't plan to make it a software, uh, software control of dependencies. I want to just uh, require plugins that are published on the main page to specify the required version. And it, it would be simpler and uh, easier to manage. Because we, in Leaflet, we don't usually need uh, a lot of complex interdependencies. We, so everything is much simpler. We don't need 